I just had a 12-year-old boy show up here at my front door asking for help. He's emaciated. He's got tape around his legs. He's hungry and he's thirsty. Today we will delve into the heart of a story as incredible as it is disturbing. Behind the facades of perfection and apparent love lies a dark secret. This is the story of Ruby Franke and Jody Hildebrand, two women who, behind an apparent normality, hit a world of terror and abuse. It all began with the courageous escape of a 12-year-old boy, determined to escape the prison that his own family had become. A tale of courage, resilience, and the search for truth hidden behind the veil of appearance, all shown through the eyes of law enforcement. Hi, I was just wondering if you could do two favors. Well, what are they? Uh, taking me to the nearest police station. Well, actually, just one fine. Well, what's going on, sir? I have a seat there. It's personal business. Have a seat. What's your name? So he's very afraid. This kid has obviously been... I think he's been... He's been detained. He's been... He's obviously covered in wounds. All right, we need the cops here as soon as possible. The I'll take more. How did you get the ropes on you? Who did him? The kid is frightened with wrists and ankles bound in duct tape. He is visibly malnourished, and he walked under the sun with only his socks. Yet despite this, has the strength to ask for help. Law enforcement is alerted and immediately begins to investigate on site in the town of Ivan's, Utah. Front door's off to the left. Step out. I have, I have my turn. That's great. Step out of the house. No, I'm not going to step out step of the house. Step out of the house. Step out of the house. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're just going to step out of the house. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. How do you come to my house? Right there. Look, they come into my house. So have a seat right there. Do you have a search warrant? Have a seat right there. Do you have a search warrant? Have a seat right there. I'll explain everything after. Hold have a seat right there. Do you have a search warrant, Hold sir? On. Control 12X11, can you hold the air? We're searching the house. I can tell you what's in the house. Okay. Just have a seat right there for me. Do you have a search warrant? We'll explain it after this. You can't just come into my house without a search warrant. We'll explain everything after this, ma'am. A little girl is found inside the house. She has shaved hair and is initially mistaken for a boy. She is visibly malnourished and frightened barely responding to officers. So it's just you in here? Where's your sister at? Contact one. You okay? Huh? You doing okay? I'm not gonna hurt you. Promise. See this right here? It's a badge. It tells me I don't hurt people. I'm just here to make sure you're okay. Okay. Well, that's one of the reasons why we're here. So we'll explain after everything's done, after we clear the house and make sure everything's fine in But there. why are you coming into my house without a we'll search warrant? We'll explain it after this. But that doesn't make sense. You come into my house and do what you want, and then you tell me you don't have a no, warrant? No, we'll explain why we did. But don't you have to have a warrant? Not at this moment, we don't. We're here on exigent circumstances. 
and I'll explain it after this, after my sergeant and the officer are done clearing the house. Thanks, Dad. Is there anybody else in the house? Yes. Two kids? There's a little girl. Just one? She's right over here. Okay. How old is she? She'll be 10 next week. Okay. And she's on this side? Mm-hmm. I have Airbnb guests over there. Probably scared me to death. Okay. And they're on this side of the house then? They're right over there. She's over here. Can you get through the house that way? Yes, they just okay. have to go right there. And there's no other kids besides her? No. Are you scared? Are we helped your brother. And we got him some help too. And that's what we want to do for you. That's we want to get you some help too. We are safe. We will not hurt you and we won't do anything to hurt you. Um, we received a report of an emaciated juvenile um, that had duct tape around his uh, extremities that was asking for food and water and based on that information there are other people in the home so we're ensuring that there is nobody else in the same condition. So under that exit and sheet C we've entered the home. Thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah. And okay, where, where, where were we? Our police department is 55 North Main Street in Ivins. Did you hear that, Adam? I did, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and Jody, um, officer, thank you. I don't know if you're starting Yeah, no, we're here. Absolutely, I will walk away and you are on your own. Yeah, he said he said uh, he was tied on the ground with a rope. That's where the wounds came from. Cayenne pepper mixed with uh, honey, he said, on the wounds. And then covered that with 
the plastic saran wrap and then the duct tape over the wounds. It's underneath the tape. As soon as they took it off, you can, even outside, you can smell. You can smell the, the flesh. Yeah, with the ropes on all four of his extremities. And that's where the wounds came from. And then, and then that's what we cut off was that. Yeah, they dressed the wounds. Um, some of the wounds when I was in there, um, when they went to go um, peel it, they thought it was some of the dressing. It was actually his skin that was peeling. Ruby Franca was the soul and face of the family YouTube channel, Eight Passengers. Opened with her husband in 2015, she explained in videos how to educate their children. More than two million people followed them. Ruby Franca's rules included fasting, corporal punishment, and sleep deprivation. Let me see it. Mm -mm. Let me see it. I see it. We should clarify that in our house, all our kids know that uh, cell phones are free game for parents. So we can monitor safety. My bedroom was taken away for seven months and then you give it back like a couple weeks ago. I don't think our viewers know that. <laughs> Several reports had been made over time precisely because of the educational YouTube videos against the influencer. Ruby Franco always defended herself by saying that her parenting style was not abuse, but a way to teach her children the consequences of their actions. If you cut one more thing in my house, <laughs> I'm going to take the scissors, look at me, and I'm going to cut its head off. Grandma, you be so mad! So what are you going to do? Are you going to cut anything else? No. You promise? Five days before her arrest, Ruby Franco was stopped and ticketed for speeding. She had just retrieved his son after a previous escape. Um, you have five days, no more, 14 to contact Santa Clara Justice Court. It shows right there in that little box right there. And then just has a phone number right there. Okay, you have any questions for me? Okay, just slow down for me, please. Thank you. August 30th, 2023. Ruby is arrested. The YouTube mom appears angry and annoyed as officers put handcuffs on her and take her to the police department. The officer who transported Ruby to the department noted that she is definitely not a talker, noting how she remains silent whenever possible. You wanna put on one of our vehicles? Yeah, you want. Okay, just place your hand behind your back for me. Perfect. And then right now I can put a finger in each of these, okay? And I'm just going to double up this so I don't tighten up on you on the way out there. Where's your car? It's out there. Yeah. I'm about to come in. Um, you don't have anything on you that I should know about, correct? Any weapons, anything that we're going to find. Before we put you in a police vehicle, we need to search your person to make sure you don't have anything on you. Is there anything you have on you? Okay. I'm going to search you before we put you in his car. That's just protocol, so I'm just going to have you step right over here, and then just widen your legs, front, widen your stance, yep, perfect. Are you wearing a bra? Okay, I'm just going to go like this through and make sure you don't have anything. You said you're not wearing a bra? Okay. Is that just like a tank top under here? Okay. Just going to lift up your hair. Okay. All right, you're just going to walk with Officer Hines. No, go out there. And then, hey, Hines. You want me this way or that way? Yeah. Okay. And then if you want to go down the downstairs yeah. into the interview room downstairs. Sounds good. Hey, LT, there's a panic room inside the garage. Downstairs, underneath the garage. Bathroom. Yeah, he says it's kind of it's downstairs and it's underneath one of the garages and he's calling it a safe room. He says he said something about Fort Knox, so I don't know if it has a Fort Knox door or safe on it, but that's what he's talking about. Temple, we've got it, but we can't get into it. My guess is that would be where they're at. 
He says it's a large room. It's a panic room. Washington County Prosecutor's Office shared some pages from Franca's diary, where he wrote that he wanted to free his children from the devil. On the July 9th page, he details the abuse. He makes the boys sleep on the floor, shaves them down, abuses and starves them. The boys' names are given as E and R. In a diary entry, he writes that he does not want to feed the devil and calls them weak-minded and manipulative. He describes torture, physical labor under the sun and isolation. There's in the interview room. So it could have gone that way, but could she open the door? We'll get these shades right here. This next one right right here. Right here. And we'll go ahead and make every one of those cups right here. Go to the other one of them. This way, yeah. While the child who escaped was in Ivan's, police in American Fork were dispatched to the home of Pom Botcher, a friend of Ruby's, in an attempt to find her other children. How's it going? Good. I'm Officer Hawkins, sir. I'm looking for Pam. Is Pam in today? Yeah, it's my wife. Is your wife? Hi. She's here. Hi. Hello, Pam. How are you doing? Good. I'm Officer Hawkins, American Fork Police Department. Hi. Sir. So we had a uh, agency assist out of St. George in Springville that we're just looking for. Is okay. When you picked her up, what was the uh, what was the case? Did somebody ask you to pick her up, or did you just pick her up? What was going on? Well, I'm having guests coming, and she came and did some cleaning for me. Some cleaning for you? Um, is she, you yeah. work right now in the house? In the living room, right there. Okay, great. Uh, we're going to have both of you come out here then. If you can, just for a second. We just had to go over some stuff. Um, you have a warrant? Yeah, we do. Let me see it, please. So, it's in my car, but right now, my concern is... Will you just tell him you're all right? Well, yeah, yeah. we have to physically see her. Come to the we'll doorway. Ahead. We'll go ahead and get the copy of the warrant for you, okay? You have a warrant for my house? Specifically uh, for, for you. For the, yeah, for you and the child. Yeah. Okay. So, what is going on as of right now, stuff? I'll just need you to give your phone to your husband. Okay. Okay. And as of this moment, you're going to be detained right now, okay? Okay. Okay, so, so is, there, is there anything on you? Uh, no. Okay, perfect. Just put your hands in front of you, okay? Just gonna place you temporarily under arrest. Wait, 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 I'll explain to you that I'll explain to you. What are you guys doing? I've explained this already. I'm being as courteous as I can. Okay, okay? well, I'm gonna call an attorney. That's fine. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I don't on. even know what this is all about. Okay, so I'm gonna explain to you when we get to the car. Yes, I just explained to you that you're being detained right now. Got a call about two kids that were found in a spot that they saved and uh, tied up, and um, it's siblings, and the suspects are the parents. Okay. Um, St. George has mom and dad detained down there, uh, and they are doing some interviews right now to kind of figure out everything that's going on. One other sibling that we're still looking for, uh, 
that are are considered still dangerous, and DCFS has a warrant to take them both into custody and into state's custody. Um, Pam was seen picking up. Officers explained that detectives were investigating allegations of child abuse, and a warrant required Ruby's children to be put into the custody of the Department of Children and Family Services, DCFS. Okay. My daughters, are you sure you have the right daughter, Stacy Crane? Someone from St. George that has, has their child. No, that's not my daughter. Okay. Well, those officers are on their way up here to talk to you. Okay. And, and talk to her. Okay. And DCFS is on their way as well. Okay. okay. I'm not here to argue the logistics. No, I know. Those, I'm those telling are, you what yeah, I know. Yeah, it's okay. just those would be my granddaughters, and those aren't my granddaughters. Those are my friend's daughters. Okay. So your friend's mm -hmm. daughters then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah is Ruby Frankie's daughter. Okay. She's, she's a friend of ours. She comes over and helps me every once in a while to do cleaning and stuff. Okay. So this is what happened, okay? Her parents were in the situation of a child abuse allegation. Okay. DCFS made the report and went to the house and found children malnourished and locked in a safe. Okay. In a safe? In a safe. Okay. So now those officers and the DCFS have to custody those children and we're looking for this one. The rec center, when they went to go find her, said that you picked her up. Yeah, So I did. now they are trying to figure out why, what, I picked her why up. you picked her up, what you know with her, is she okay, is, is she, did she come here willingly? All that kind of stuff. Okay. okay. Yeah, they so can ask So as soon as they that. come here, yeah. we'll be on our way. Okay. Okay. That's why I said you're just detained. You're not placed under arrest just right now until they figure out what's going on with their part. Okay? Okay. Right. So as long as she's not tied up and bound because you I didn't make her scrub do something, the, you know? I didn't make her scrub the floor and they vacuumed and stuff because I have company coming tonight out of from Costa Rica. Okay. So, but she did have her own free will. We had lunch. Yeah. We went to Rolly's farm and had ice cream. Okay. So. Okay. So you just want. What That's not my case. Okay. DCFS and Springfield Police Department asked me to come here, make contact with you. It's here to detain you until okay. they can ask questions. Okay. Okay. Any other questions for now? Until they get here at least? No, I just. Yeah, I was just scared because I thought it was my daughter. That's not my daughter. My daughter only has little. I don't. I don't understand why having her come to my house. Who her? Yeah. Because they don't know whether it was voluntary or not. I think it's the oh, first I problem. See. Okay. And the second problem is since those those children are. I don't know the full details of how mistreated or how malnourished those children uh -huh. are. Okay. All I know is that's the words and treatment that they used. Yeah. Which means that they are severely concerned of her well-being. Okay. And every child that's in that home. Okay. So they'll just have to talk to her and... Because there has been... I've been a part of many DCFS cases where as soon as the parents are hooked up, kids are taken. If there's any kids that aren't in the home immediately when the kids are taken, guess what? They're scurrying around. Other family members are picking them up that way. The parent can come back and grab them before DCFS takes them. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, you may be a good person, but there's a lot of people in this world that aren't. Right. Well, if DCFS is supposed to take her, then they can take her. I yep. mean, I, I'm not going to try to fight that. I mean, I, you Well, know. that's what they're going to come talk to you about. They left already, so they should be here in the, the next 10, 15 minutes. But Springville, Springville just left as I got off the phone with him. So, so he's who, probably going to oh, be about DCFS 20. or whatever it is is coming? Yeah, so they'll, DCFS will come for their part for and then the detective so they're just going to ask her if she came you. willingly to my house and, and if everything is okay and she has to be taken into state custody oh she does okay because i think her parents were arrested okay so um i'm just wondering uh why they don't want maybe they are no i have her she's in my house she's in here yeah i didn't get told The children were taken into protective custody by the state. While Pam had been detained in handcuffs, they were removed when officers from the Springville Police Department arrived to ask her questions. 
No charges have been filed against her. So she had a family emergency. emergency. I need you to pick up the girls. Yeah, she said, would you mind watching the girls while I'm gone? Because she was leaving. I said, yeah, I could do that because I need some help cleaning. Okay, and then did you say to bring them to your house for today and then take it back home tonight or to keep them here for a couple days? She didn't say. I was just planning on bringing them home tonight. Oh, okay. Then she also... What type of things do they do with the program? Um, it's like life skills. Life skills. Like um, learning how to, you know, it's like be honest, responsible, and humble. Those are those three pillars of their, of their program. Um, is there like a meeting place for his med or is it kind of a virtual no, place? It, it's online every Saturday morning. It's called Empowering Joy. Okay. How long have you known them for? Oh, jeez. Ish. <laughs> Probably, oh, gee, I don't know. Let's see. I mean, I didn't know her really well because she was in the program, but I didn't really know her. But I, I've known her probably really well, maybe three years. Okay. Is this like a program that she started or is it just one that she kind of... She's just a part of she's it. She's just part of it. During the initial police interview, Detective Jessica Bate has explained how the Utah mom looked through her while she was being questioned about abusing her own children. Ruby appears in a trance and silent. Would you feel more comfortable talking to one of us? Maybe you want me to take a step out if you want. Or if you feel more comfortable talking to him, I can step out. I'll wait till I have a lawyer. Okay. Do you want to answer that? Are you, you don't want to talk to us about anything? So, yeah, this... This is just your chance to tell us we're just trying to get your side of the story. Um, so it's your chance to do that. But it's up to you. We're just here to talk. And I mean, I'm not asking any criminal questions. If you don't want to talk to us, just let us know and we'll, we'll be done. I've already told you. The, you want a lawyer? Okay. Yes. Okay. Easy enough. Thank you. Is there anything else I can get for you in the meantime? I got the water, do you need a bathroom break or anything like that? No? Okay. Before she was arrested alongside Franco on child abuse charges, Jody Hildebrandt was counseling Mormon couples and families in Utah. Seven former patients who used her services between 2008 and 2019 told NBC News that Hildebrandt methodically separated spouses, pathologized patients' behaviors as evidence of various addictions, and encouraged people to cut off others who weren't living in accordance with her teachings. And the thing about our interview, if we ask you any questions that you don't want to answer, you can just tell us, I don't want to answer that question. But we do want to have a basis and an understanding of what's going on in that home or what went on up north that brought them into your home. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to share any of that and you don't want to answer any other questions, that's okay. I, I'd like to just tell you. But I don't, I don't know who you are. I don't know if you're going to flip my words. I, I don't no. know. And that's the good thing about cameras. Everything, it's pretty much double recorded, audio, video. And it's for the safety of for you and for us because we don't want to flip your words. And this will all be pretty much right there to support you. So we're not going to use anything attorney against you. be so insistent then. He's an honest, good man. Goes to church. I trust him. Why would he say that to me then? I don't know. I don't, I don't know your attorney. Be honest. Well, I'm just but saying he's he's a, he's a good, good honest man, yeah, and know. I'm an honest person as well. So we get along great. And he just said, "Do not say anything." Maybe just as an attorney, they just they always say that. They always want to be with their client. I'm not sure, but like I said, at any time, if you don't want to answer a question, you don't have to. So the ball's really in your court on what you do want to answer and what you don't. So. Well, I think it, it looks sad that I don't want to answer anything, but it's not because I'm trying to be difficult. I'm really hanging on what he told me to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who's your attorney? Adam, Adam, 
and I'm, uh, his father's an attorney, his brother's an attorney. Is he, is he local? Yeah. Is it local? I don't know. He's on um, the street where the town hall is. Oh, they all have the same name. The whole yeah. reason we're sitting here today is we just, we, there's a lot of questions we have that we just, maybe misunderstandings that we just mm -hmm. need to clarify. And I know, and I'd love to tell you if you were here, because I don't know, I, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen with what I say, you know, I, I watched, I'm a psychologist, I've watched people flip things all the time, <laughs> so I get it, and I, I, I sit on your side, I get it, I wish people didn't do that, but they do. Well, if you're not willing to answer any of the questions about yourself, would you be willing to answer any questions maybe about Ruby or Kevin that you could help us understand? We just honestly want to understand what, what their dynamic is, what happened to the children, what caused their separation. Right. And after talking to Kevin, it sounds like you know a lot about their dynamic mm -hmm. and their relationship. So if you could help us understand that at the least, that would be awesome. And that's nothing incriminating towards yourself because it's not pertaining to you. So if you could help us understand that. Jody, we're, we're going to do this. You asked for your attorney and we'll, we'll leave it at that. We'd like to maybe talk to you later when you have your attorney here present. Absolutely. And, and we'll go he that made an okay. appointment at 4 she, on made Friday. Made an appointment here. with that here at 4? He talked to the to the officer okay. and said, "Can we make a time?" And he said out loud, "Do not talk to them." <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I'll, I'll talk and see if we can schedule that, and maybe that's just something we we just do with your attorney. Okay. Do you have any questions for us? Anything we can answer in the meantime? No. Okay. No. Alright, appreciate your time. We'll uh, we have you hang tight in here, and we'll come back and get you, and we'll be on our way, okay? Thank you. Ruby Franca, the mother behind the family YouTube channel, Eight Passengers, was formally charged with six counts of felony child abuse by the Washington County Attorney in Utah. Chase, you want to let you know what your what criminal charges for, so you're under arrest? It's going to be two counts, second degree felony of child abuse or neglect, okay? Do you understand that or no? Are you okay? I'm wondering if there's like a medical clearance that needs to, like, do, do you need medical attention before you go to the jail? No. Okay. All right, well, we'll have you, as soon as she gets down here, we'll bring her out, okay? Okay. The women appeared to fully believe that the abuse they inflicted was necessary to teach the children how to properly repent for imagined sins and to cast the evil spirits out of their bodies, the attorney's office wrote in their case summary. Ms. Frankie, how do you plead to count one, aggravated child abuse, a second degree felony? Guilty. To count three, aggravated child abuse, a second degree felony? Guilty. To count five, aggravated child abuse, a second degree felony. Guilty. And to count six, aggravated child abuse, a second degree felony. With my deepest regret and sorrow for my family and my children, guilty. There is a factual basis set forth in the agreement that is a stipulated factual basis, counsel. That's correct, Your Honor. That is correct, Judge Walton. Any further record, counsel? Your Honor, the agreement contains a factual basis. Um, there are a few details in the factual basis that we are not in full agreement with. However, this is a guilty plea. It is not an Alford plea. The factual basis set forth, sets forth facts that uh, we agree with, uh, that Ms. Hildebrand agrees with, that are sufficient for the court to accept her plea with respect to the four counts uh, to which she is pleading guilty. And so we asked the court to accept her plea agreement. And apart from... Initially uncertain of his involvement in the case, 
Agents say they considered Kevin Franca a suspect and questioned him. Kevin Frank explained to an agent that he was not living with Ruby and the children at the time and had had no contact with any of them. I had not seen them in over a year. At the beginning of the investigation, officers confirmed that Kevin was not living with the family at the time of the abuse. And because there was no evidence linking him to the case, he was cleared as a suspect. Ruby was sentenced to serve one to 15 years in prison for each of the four counts of abuse she pleaded guilty to. Though the sentences may add up to 60 years consecutively, Utah Code states that when a court imposes consecutive sentences, the maximum amount of time that can be served is 30 years. The judge sentenced Hildebrandt to four consecutive terms of one to 15 years in prison for each count of aggravated child abuse. The Utah Board of Pardons and Parole will determine the exact amount of time Franca and Hildebrand will spend in prison. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel and click on the bell to stay updated.